Hello everybody! This episode of Chill and Cozy Gaming News is jam-packed with three hot new beautiful sim and survival game announcements, four new game and demo releases, including web fishing reeling in huge player numbers upon launch, news and updates featuring games like Fields of Mystria and Lou's Lagoon, and a list of my favorite relaxing games releasing in November. I have spent hours compiling this research, and trust me, you don't want to miss the juicy details. We'll begin with the announcement of a brand new sandbox life sim that looks like it's straight out of a book of fairy tales. Hawthorne is a co-op RPG where you take upon the role of a woodland rat who is crafting a village with charming NPC critters through farming, building, and exploring an ever-changing world that feels absolutely enormous given your minuscule size. Hawthorne's Victorian style is drenched in primitive cozy charm, whimsy, and oh yeah, you can ride an owl who apparently can play Quidditch? I think this is the perfect example of developers thinking outside the box and using anthropomorphism, perspective, rich writing, and stylized art to breathe new life into the life sim genre. If you're interested in updates and playtest information for Hawthorne, there's an email sign up on the game's website. If Hawthorne doesn't have enough high octane action for you, how about the recent announcement of Subnautica 2? Oh my gosh, the trailer had me slightly terrified. I never considered the original Subnautica to be cozy, but this looks to be a whole new level of crap your wetsuit ocean exploration. So what's different in Subnautica 2? For starters, you'll have a whole new underwater planet to explore, there's optional online multiplayer co-op with up to three friends, and the graphics will certainly be improved over OG Subnautica, which released back in 2018. What won't change is the heart-pounding yet blissful ocean survival and exploration that Subnautica fans have been enamored with for the past six years. Subnautica has become to the survival game genre what Stardew and Animal Crossing are for farming and life sims, a benchmark of superb quality, and I'm thrilled we'll have early access to the Subnautica sequel in 2025 on PC and Xbox. Third, a new Dinkum game was just revealed called Dinkum Together. Dinkum developer James Benden has teamed up with Korean developer 5-Minute Lab to bring what looks to be a multi-platform iteration of Dinkum, where players will explore, farm, and create a homestead in a tropical Australian outback setting. It's a fresh take on Dinkum, with new characters, art style, and lore, and carrying over multiplayer gameplay. The developers shared they're working to bring Dinkum together to multiple platforms. But I noticed their website mentions a Dinkum Pocket Island released earlier this year, which I can find no information about. So will this be a mobile-only title like Animal Crossing's Pocket Camp, or will they bring it to PC and consoles too? We'll have to wait for more information, but this is an exciting announcement of a cute upcoming game, and we'll talk more about Dinkum later. Next up are four hot new game and demo releases that you may have missed. Web Fishing is a $5 multiplayer chatroom style fishing game that launched mid-October. I just happened to discover it while browsing new games on Steam, and it continues to top the charts. I currently have over 17 hours in web fishing, and although it's super simple with chill island fishing and working to unlock new equipment and fun items, it's the togetherness with random players and chatting via text in small lobbies of 12 players that has made me and thousands of others fall in love with the game. Web fishing is one of those rare games that has so far attracted a pretty wholesome community, and every game session offers relaxing fishing and exhilarating opportunities for exciting yet optional social interaction. I can only hope it will port to consoles. It's really good. Watch my quick web fishing review video if you want to learn more. Cozy Island is another soothing and simple island-themed cozy game about exploring, building a little home, growing a garden, playing mini-games, cashing in your earnings at the gotcha machine, and you can even invite friends to join you. I can see Cozy Island being a great game to boot up when you have a few minutes and you want to unwind with a carefree, cute adventure alone or with friends. 
The Cozy Island demo launched on October 14th and is free to try on Steam. Hold on to your horses for another game with a new Steam demo. Cattle Country is an upcoming Western-style farm sim. Think Stardew Valley meets the Wild West with a country aesthetic, livestock, shooting your pistol at bandits, and turning your unkempt plot of land into a pioneer's paradise. Cattle Country won't likely release until 2025, but the demo went live on October 25th, so mosey on over and play it before it's gone with the wind. <laughs> Sorry, you're probably too young to get that reference. <sighs> Moving along to a cozy game that released on the Steam last week, Fruit Bus currently has a very positive review rating, which is no surprise given the lovely graphics and ability to customize and upgrade your very own fruit peddling food truck. Explore an open world, forage for ingredients, chop up new fruit dishes, and serve your whimsical critter customers. I really like the nomadic fruit truck theme, cozy vibes, and cartoon art style but wasn't sure I'd play enough to make the $25 price tag worthwhile. But I've enjoyed watching the Fruit Bus gameplay and will be keeping it on my wish list for future sales. Next up is the latest news and updates on some of our favorite chill games, beginning with a sneak peek at the progress on Lou's Lagoon, the upcoming open world seaplane delivery game with island exploration, crafting, and a mystery to solve. The developers recently published their first devlog for Luz Lagoon, giving us a closer look at my favorite part of the game, flying. The mechanic is super casual, so as not to punish players. You don't have to worry about crashing as there is a bounce effect when the plane collides with objects, but there is an optional ring challenge course for those who want to test their flying skills. The Luz Lagoon team also shared a behind the scenes look at how they produced the immersive cloud effect that swallows your seaplane. It's actually achieved through a sphere filled with textures that mimic a cloud. Pretty cool. We also get a glimpse at the scanner tool which players use to locate and dig up objects as well as collect resources. A new bounce and squish physics effect was created and looks pretty cool when vacuuming resources into the scanner tool. The developers are continuing to tweak and perfect the fishing mechanics with adorable animations and enhance the glider for more, well, gliding. <laughs> There's still no release date for Loose Lagoon, but you can wishlist it on Steam and keep an eye out for their Kickstarter to launch. Moonlight Peaks, the farming and life sim where you play as a vampire who sleeps in a coffin and can turn into a bat just like that and grow crops and tend to your odd menagerie of farm animals, has an updated demo on Steam with a limited time Halloween theme. The demo is currently limited to growing crops and customizing your homestead, but you'll find spooky pumpkin decor, updated dialogue, and fall colored visuals. Moonlight Peaks still has its release date as 2026, which I believe is hyperbolic because they wanted to relieve the pressure of a deadline. So I'm going to be hopeful that it'll be available early because it's such a cute, unique life sim. And here are two more cute games that have teamed up Aussie style. Go Go Town and Dinkum's exciting crossover collaboration has launched, bringing adorable iconic items to each other's games. Dinkum players will find a new NPC who can craft Go Go Town items, such as the beloved unicorn tricycle that farts rainbow contrails, while in Go Go Town, the wombat marsupial from Dinkum was added as a rideable item. This is just the cutest thing ever, and it makes sounds too. I guess that's what a wombat sounds like. And watch out for three iconic Dinkum characters looking to move in and work for you in Go Go Town. These crossover items are available indefinitely, and if you're looking for Animal Crossing style games for PC, you really can't pick much better than these two quality titles. Mm. Equally cute but more farming focused is Fields of Mystria, which has its first major update releasing on November 18th. This update will allow you to increase your rating with NPCs from four to six hearts, along with events for dateable characters whom you raise to six hearts. The player skill and village level caps will be extended, new bulletin board quests and rewards will be added, there's a brand new festival along with home decor items and even new cosmetics for your farm animals. The animals. Honestly, that's one of my favorite parts of the game since you can breed 120 different animals and colors. 
and the pastel color palette is such a splendid treat for a farming game. It's basically a cute version of Stardew Valley with a twist of magic. It's one of the best early access games I've ever played, is only $14 currently, and there is plenty of more Fields of Mysteria content coming in future updates, including marriage and children. And because Ulrich isn't dateable, I'm staking a claim on Hayden the Farmer, since he's stacked and is no doubt a very handy man. I can't believe it's nearly been a year since House Flipper 2 released, and the team just launched the game's fifth major update, Bewitching Renovations. Listen to this. Don't try to find your way above the second floor. There's nothing there, but let's just say it's not well secured. Clearly, she's a witch. And just look at her house. It's fantastic. This update also brings over 230 new items as well as the spooky renovations. House Flipper 2 is such a soothing, relaxing game that allows you to put creative touches on your renovation jobs and it's verified for Steam Deck and is available on console too. The sixth game update features Rekka, a cozy yet dark and mysterious exploration and building game that released into early access in September and just added their Witching Hour content on October 28th. This update added floating candles, fall-themed decor, and other cosmetic items, and the ability to carry pets. I've been so torn about Rekka because I'm not a huge fan of the witchcraft and have been leery of the negative reviews about the game's poor performance on very capable gaming PCs. But the warm yet deliciously ominous ambiance and building and decorating a wandering chicken-legged cottage ultimately sold me on the game during the recent 25% off sale on Steam. During the cool months, I find myself gravitating towards games with spooky undertones, and for 15 bucks, I'll risk poor frame rate to snuggle up with Rekka this winter and leave my gypsy chicken house on expeditions through this mystifying autumn woodland. Please say a prayer for my graphics card. And finally, here's a quick overview of some highly anticipated sim and survival games releasing this month. On November 6th, we have three games releasing, Mirthwood, Trash Goblin, and Planet Coaster 2. They all look super fun, but out of those three, I think Mirthwood is going to be my jam. And honestly, I'm trying to finish up this video so I can clear my schedule and disappear into Mirthwood for a few days. I'm super excited. And then the next day on November 7th, Magical Bakery releases onto all platforms. On November 11th, we have Nightstones. That's a game I backed on Kickstarter. It's a lot like Zelda, great adventure game. November 12th is Farming Simulator 25. My kids are getting that for Christmas. I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy that one yet, but they love that series. On November 14th, we have Pet Tea Island. I'm not exactly sure how you say that one. I think it's French adorable game. I love the graphics on this one. It's available on all platforms. November 20th, we have Luma Island. This is another one I'm 100% going to buy. I love the cozy art style, the chill vibes, and that you can choose from seven different professions, which affects your gameplay. And it's also co-op. At the end of the month is Critter Cafe, where you'll rescue cute critters and bring them to your cozy cafe. This releases on both PC and Nintendo Switch on the 26th. And that's gonna do it for this episode of Chill and Cozy Gaming News. With Hawthorne, Subnautica 2, and Dinkum Together just announced, hot new releases and demos like Web Fishing, Cozy Island, and Cattle Country, the latest news and updates about Fields of Mysteria, Go Go Town, Rekka, and Lose Lagoon, and a quick glimpse at my top upcoming games for November. From super chill games to aesthetic survival and adventure games, there's a fresh new game for you to discover or hop back into thanks to these updates. Let me know in the comments if there are any cool upcoming sim and survival games you'd like me to cover. I spend tons of time researching new games because I'm a dork, but sometimes I miss really great games that fly under my radar. Please consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on the latest in chill and cozy indie games, and I thank you for watching.